want to know how to reach max level super fast or how to fly forever? Here are 153 super secret blocks fruits things you probably didn't know. If you're a new player, there's no way you know about spectator mode. Spectator mode gives you the ability to fly your camera through the map. And this feature was so useful and overpowered. You were literally able to go from island to island and see if a fruit spawns somewhere. The command to get into this mode was control shift P. But unfortunately it was removed and nowadays only admins are able to get into spectator mode. All the players that first launched the game after update 20 was that we'll never know how bad kilo fruit was. It somehow managed to survive four years in the game and now it's been switched out for a new fruit called rocket. Kilo cost only $5,000 and it was usually the first fruit you obtained. It was literally a symbol for being poor in blocks fruits and many players used it to buy raid. Most of kilo's moves were AOE and they weren't very useful. So while it's a good thing it got removed, I'm still sad it's gone. Throughout the game's development, developers added a bunch of codes. For those who don't know, codes give you things like double XP, a stat reset, or a single belly. But many of you don't know that a lot of codes got removed from the game. And these are just some of those that got removed. RIP to them. If you're an OG player, you'll know that the starter menu used to look way different back in the day. The characters representing each side are now different. But can you guess why? If you said to make the game look more appealing, you're half right. But the main reason why the characters were switched, especially on the pirate side, is because the pirate was represented by Buggy the Clown. Buggy the Clown is one of the most known characters from the One Piece anime, and One Piece almost sued Blocks Fruits because of this. I'm starting to see why they removed it. When you first start playing Blocks Fruits, you'll start on the starter island. In this phase, it's important to optimize your XP gain, and to do this, you'll be required to kill NPCs, bosses, server hop, upgrade your stats, and get better fruit. But in order to make this process so much faster, your first goal should be to get a good elemental fruit, preferably a magma or ice fruit. These fruits will allow you to farm NPCs without them being able to hit you. You just need to be one level above them in order for this to work. And at this stage, don't bother to get a better sword or fighting style, just stick to the fruit. Remember, you're still in the first C, so when you get a good elemental fruit, your next primary goal should be to work your way up to lightning fruit, since it's the best fruit for the first C. When leveling up, you'll need to move from island to island to make the process much faster. But many of you don't know that you can actually skip a few islands at the beginning, which will save you so much time. When you first spawn, immediately get a free boat and head to Fountain City Island. There you'll be able to kill NPCs that are a way higher level than you are, which means much more XP. But how? There's a special wall on this island. Why is it special? Well, it gives you the ability to kill NPCs without them being able to hit you, even if you're only level 1. You just need something to lure them to this wall, jump to the other side, and hit them until you kill them. This is such an important trick, yet many of you still don't do it. Once you get a good fruit for the C you're in, it's important to stick to it. If you got a magma fruit in the first C, don't switch it for another fruit unless it's lightning. Why? Well, you'll lose all the mastery you had on that fruit, which benefited you way more than a new fruit will for who knows how many levels. You'll certainly not lose them, but you will start from zero mastery on that new fruit. The rule is the same for swords and fighting styles. Pick one that's good and never change it. It's absolutely key to know how to fight, and it's not just about swords, fighting styles, and fruits, but it's also about technique. Most of your weapons are area of effect weapons, which means the damage is done to the field rather than to a single NPC at a time. When doing quests, there's a technique that will help you do these way faster. Once you start a quest, go from one NPC to another and just hit them once to lure them at you. When you get a few of them chasing you, start using your moves and hits on them. Because of the area of effect, with one move you will deal damage to all of them, and it'll take you way less time to kill them than if you were to do it one by one. I've always wondered why there are igloos we can't enter on the docks for, but I just found out that you can actually enter these. Just get the perfect angle and flash step inside of them, where you will find a secret chest. I think these are the least looted chests in the whole game. What's even better is that you can see through them once you're inside. It's a perfect hiding spot since you can see everyone, but no one can see you. And you can use it to make sure your friends don't sneak up on you. Well, I can't because I don't have any friends. The Great Tree is the third island in the third sea. And if you have access to it, you might consider yourself a pro. But you probably didn't know about this NPC that lets you extend your crew by one slot for 2,000 fragments. His name is Crew Captain, and he'll let you extend your crew up to 30 slots. So if you want to have a crew with 30 people, you'll need 30,000 fragments to extend it up to 30 slots. Jeez, that's a lot of fragments. But in case you don't have a crew and talk to him, he'll just say, what's up? Nothing much, man. What about you? Did you know that there's a hidden maze in the Marine Fortress? This is definitely one of the most interesting secrets hidden in the first sea. But unfortunately, if you don't have a dark blade, you won't be able to enter it. You need to go to the back of the fortress and look for a wall that's a different shade than the rest. Open it with your dark blade and voila! This maze is mainly used to obtain a love letter, which is needed to complete the sun quest, which upgrades the dark blade to the V2 variant. There's no way you already knew about this. You probably don't even have a dark blade.
explain it. But at least you have friends. But here's an NPC many of you still don't know about. If you go to the green zone in the second sea and get all the way up to the highest point on the largest plant, you'll find an NPC called Mysterious Man. He will sell you the true triple katana for 2 million belly. But you must have all three legendary swords, Sadi, Wando, and Shisui. You can buy these from the legendary sword dealer, who only spawns at certain intervals throughout the game. On top of that, you must have 300 mastery on all three of these swords. Only then will you be able to get a true triple katana. In order to obtain the first title in this video, you need to buy something from the legendary sword dealer or master of auras. We all know that the sword's legendary dealer is selling costs 2 million belly, but that's the price you pay if you want your second name to be the collector. But if you think that's hard, try defeating 20 players, each kill taking bounty or honor, all without dying in the same server. I'm sure you'll spend the whole day trying to complete that. But the Raging Demon title will totally be worth it. The Flash is always the fastest, and if you want to get this title, you'll need to complete a raid in under three and a half minutes. That should be easy if you've got Buddha, and at this point, we all know you can awaken any fruit using Buddha. Did you know that for reaching an honor of 20 million or more, you receive a Blue Fleet Admiral title? It'll take you quite some time to get this one, starting with the fighting style every single player has. Combat, obviously. Combat is the starting fighting style that you get upon first joining the game. This is the weakest and least common use fighting style in the entire game, especially among 3rd C players, since most players switch to a different fighting style. Because of that, it's ironically considered the rarest fighting style. Some players also like to keep combat and max its mastery for fun, but if you want to level up as quickly as possible, I recommend to switch to another fighting style as soon as you can. Compared to the other options of the first C, combat is generally weak. Keep in mind that if you switch to another fighting style, you'll never again be able to obtain combat. It's literally a flex to have a combat style in the third C, and there should definitely be a title for it. Something like Combat Combatant of Combat. Moving on to the Dark Step, one of two fighting styles that has four moves. Dark Step is a leg-based fighting style that most people obtain in the first C, but it's also obtainable in the second and third C. When you activate Aura while having Dark Step equipped, Aura will appear on your legs instead of your arms. This is entirely visual and provides no additional buffs, but it's still a cool detail. This fighting style can be bought for 150,000 belly from the Dark Step teacher, who is located in the Pirate Village in the first C. When it comes to the second C, you can obtain Dark Step via the same NPC on the lava side of Hot and Cold Island. And in the third C, it can be obtained once again via the same NPC located at the castle on the sea. Is it just me or does this rhyme? The first Dark Step move is Z, which is Flying Kick. The second is X, which is Breakdance. Third is C, which is Barrage. And the last one is V, which is Overheat. All of these moves are area of effect moves. And the first move has an aiming feature. Dark Step is the cheapest fighting style out of all the fighting styles. And it's pretty good for grinding in the first C due to low knockback and high AoE. Subscribe if you ever use this style. But this third fighting style is perfect for you if you love electricity. Of course, I'm talking about electric, which is a fighting style obtainable in all Cs. Electric is a fighting style you must master if you want to get electric claw fighting style in the third C, which is electric's successor. Electric can be learned for 500,000 belly from the mad scientist, who is located on the ground level of Skylands behind the rock. And it's got three moves, stomp, electrical tackle, and electrical floor. This fighting style was added in update 2 and reworked in update 17.3. While it's equipped, your hands will be covered in electricity, which is purely for cosmetics. But the interesting thing about this fighting style is that it cannot harm rubber users, because in real life, rubber doesn't conduct electricity. All moves are also ground-based, which might be electric's only downside. The next fighting style is Water Kung Fu, which is also a bridge you must cross to get another fighting style in the third C, Sharkman Karate, an upgraded version of Water Kung Fu. This fighting style can be bought for 750,000 belly from the Water Kung Fu teacher, which can be found in the underwater city in the first C. But I don't really see the point in having this in the first C, let alone second and third. It's pretty overrated and there are better options, but you'll have to go through it if you want to obtain Sharkman Karate. Water Kung Fu has three moves, Steam Charge Fist, Deadly Shower, and Heavy Water Punch. All moves are area of effect and don't have that big of a knockback, so it's alright for farming. It's not recommended for PvP however, because it's quite slow, but its upgraded version, Sharkman Karate, is recommended because of its high combo potential. Did you know if you've earned over 100 million belly, you're still not in the top 1% of players. That's because the chances of earning more than 100 million belly are 3.12%. That doesn't sound like a lot, but believe me it is. In order to be in the top 1%, you'd have to earn around 280 million belly. The Holiday Cloak is a mythical accessory, which means it's pretty hard to obtain it. You have a 3% chance to get this item while opening the present at the North Pole, but the fact that you can only get it during the Christmas event makes it way more rare and difficult to obtain. Drop a like if you have the Holiday 
cloak. The Hallow Essence is an item that was added in Update 16 and is used for spawning the raid boss Soul Reaper at the Haunted Castle. This item is only obtainable in the third seed by either praying at the graveyard or getting it from the Death King via random surprise. Both of these methods are difficult and the chances of getting this item are 2.5%. One guy even said he was grinding trying to get it for five whole days and still didn't get it. Swan glasses have always been a really favored piece of accessory in the game. These powerful glasses boost a range of buffs that will help you in various PvP situations, including high defense, cooldown reduction, movement speed, and more. Its only downside is how difficult it is to obtain them. You need to kill a Dawn Swan in the second seed and pray that he drops them because the drop chance of his glasses is only 2.49%. That means you'll probably have to kill him 40 times in order to secure these glasses. Starting off with a fruit that we would have all loved to see in Blocks Fruits, which is Magnet Fruit. This is a pretty interesting one considering many players have been waiting for it for years. Magnet would have some nice moves that deal a lot of damage. I suppose it would have at least one area of effect move and one projectile move. However, its most interesting move would be Magnetic Pull. When activated, it would pull enemies around you closer and then you could just kill them. This would be so good for pranking players and getting on the nerves of your enemies when they're trying to escape. Shout out to all the super talented people who've made these custom fruits. Definitely make sure to go check them out. We already have candy and blocks fruits in the form of currency, but imagine having a candy fruit. Wait, wouldn't that be too good because, well, candy is good. We all love candy, so I suppose this fruit would heal your enemies? Luckily, no. This fruit would make your enemy's stomach hurt because they'd eat way too much of it. This fruit should definitely have a sword shaped like a lollipop, and it would be pretty cool because when you're eating it, you would literally eat candy. Did you know that the first accessory 90% of players get is a black cape? Considering it's the easiest accessory to get, you'd think it'd be bad, but it's actually great. Black cape is a rare accessory you can buy from Parlus who's located in Marine Fortress in the first seed. It costs 50,000 belly and the only requirement to buy it is to be level 50. This accessory gives you plus 100 health and energy, and 5% more damage on anything, whether it's a fruit or a sword. Subscribe if this was your first accessory. Moving on to the next accessory, which is also obtained at the Marine Fortress. We've got the coat. This coat is Vice Admiral's favorite piece of clothing, and with some luck, you might get it after killing him. This accessory gives you plus 200 energy and 10% on melee attacks. This is a great accessory for players who primarily use fighting styles. Is there anything cooler in Blocks Fruits than Cool Shades? I don't think so. Cool Shades are the accessory you have a chance of obtaining upon killing Cyborg, the last boss in the first sea located at Fountain Island. This accessory gives you plus 100 health and energy, 7.5% damage on any attack, and 17.5% faster running speed. Safe to say this is the best accessory you can get in the first sea. And the last accessory from the first sea that's worth mentioning, Artomio Ring. This accessory can be bought from Yoshi at the second island of Skylands, and it gives you 10% more damage on fruit attacks. This is a great accessory for players who primarily use fruits, but it's pretty expensive, costing 500,000 belly, at least compared to other similar accessories. None of you probably know that a while ago, you were able to stop the combat and save your life. How you ask? Just run back to the safe zone, and your enemy won't be able to hit you. This was changed in update 6, and since then, safe zones are ignored if combat has already been initiated with another player. Do you think this should come back, or should it stay the way it is? Did you know that way back in time, there was actually a server browser? You were able to join server you had never joined before and filter them by total bounty, region, and server name. Unfortunately, this feature got completely removed for unknown reasons, probably due to the difficulty of moderating those servers. One of the craziest things you could do a few years ago was to go to the third seat even as a new player. This allowed new players to level up crazy fast, but the developers attempted to patch the glitch in update 16, but their patch was unsuccessful. However, players under level 1500 can no longer deal any damage whatsoever to the Indra boss. Do you know what's the easiest way to find Mirage Island? Well, I don't, but I know that back in time, you used to need a full moon in order to find the Mirage Island, which is a special island that functions apart from all the other islands. It's also special because Advanced Fruit Dealer and Blue Gear for Race Awakening can be found there. And luckily nowadays, you only need nighttime in order to find this island. Once you're level 105, you'll be able to start a quest to kill the Boss Yeti. In the Frozen Village, this quest gives you 20,000 XP. And if you use a code, it's double. But there's actually a special technique that'll make sure you kill a yeti without dying. All you need to do is hit and dash. The dash on the ice is longer than the dash on normal ground, so there's no way he'll hit you even once, which makes him perfect for grinding. So take the quest, kill a yeti, server hop, and repeat. You know things are getting serious when you're able to start a quest with the vice admiral, but I'll show you the best way to kill him every time without dying. Most of you don't know about this trick, especially if you just started. All you need to do is lure him down the stairs, behind the left wall, and stand just below the stairs. You'll be able to hit him while he won't be able to hit you. If you've got double XP, this quest will get you 830,000 XP alone.
For those of you who underestimate the Prison Island, just know that it can be your ticket to the second sea. Prison Island has three bosses, and you'll need to be level 230 to fight all of them. With double XP, they will give you millions of XP, and you will level up super fast. Another important thing to know is that you can hit two of the bosses through the wall. So just wall trap them, kill, repeat, and slowly work your way into the second sea. When you finally reach the second sea and have a proper reason to buy Buddha, be careful when awakening it. You're still poor and should watch your wallet, so there's no need to fully awaken your Buddha. What you want to do is complete the raid once and awaken Buddha's Z move, which is shift ability. This is the only move you need and probably the only one you'll be using anyway. Shift ability gives you higher defenses and more importantly, a way longer reach for your weapon. Then start upgrading your fighting style or a sword depending on what you prefer. And believe me, you'll become unstoppable. Most of you don't know about the cave in the frozen village. Wait, what? You already know about it? All right, but there's no way you know about this cave in the frozen village. It's located at the opposite side of the big cave and inside of it, you can find an NPC who will give you a love letter. This letter is part of the sun quest. So that means you can only enter if you have the dark blade. But here's a catch. You can simply flash step your way inside. But unfortunately, if you do this, the NPC won't be there. So you won't be able to read the letter, but you'll still be able to see it. While we're still in the frozen village, let me show you another secret blocks roots hid from us. If you go over here and head into this log cabin, the one that's facing the sea, and look up, you'll see an attic. Climb up there and get that golden chest. I bet you didn't know about that one. Also, did you know that we got cursed chest back? Once you open it, the enemies will spawn and you need to kill them in order to get high XP rewards. That's super cool. If you still haven't completed the fight with the saber expert, you probably don't know about this secret location. Head over to the desert island and look for a house that's partially engulfed in sand and has red doors. Now just head inside where you will be greeted. Once you're there, you need to find a way to unlock the secret room. Let me show you how to do that. Equip your torch and stand still next to the brown curtain. The curtains will burn down and reveal a secret room in which you'll find a wall with a poem and the cup sitting at this night table, I guess. You may be wondering what this room is. Well, all of this is a part of the puzzle you need to complete before fighting the saber expert. Comment down below if you've already completed this. The next one is hidden on purpose and you must find it in order to complete the citizen request on the floating turtle island. Once you've killed 50 forest pirates and captain elephant, You'll need to find the hidden treasure. You will need to go here, smash this wall, and head inside. Inside you will find a chest, and once you loot it, you'll get the zebra cap, an accessory that gives you 12.5% more damage on sword and gun attacks, and 12.5% cooldown on the mentioned one. And despite this being super cool, not many people know about it. If you're more of a bounty person, then you'll need the same amount of bounty to get the red empress of the sea title. Have you got any of these? Nevertheless, for the next title, we have apex predator and it already sounds crazy just by the name in order to obtain this unfortunately great title you need to kill 25 players in the same server and if you have this one you're one of the few but we're slowly getting to those most desired titles and the next one is demonized and besides the fact that you need 8 million belly to get this one you'll also spend a lot of time working your way towards it in order to achieve it you need to obtain the true triple katana and if you don't already know in order to obtain true triple katana you need to obtain three legendary swords first, Sadi, Shisui, and Wando, and each of these cost 2 million belly alone. Once you've done that, you'll be able to buy the true triple katana and get this. What? It's a great title for 8 million belly? That's just unfair. It's easier to obtain a snow white aura color than to get the demon eye title. Speaking of snow white, once you obtain it, you receive a true heart title. Dragon breath is the next fighting style on the list, a fighting style which is obtainable in the second and third C only. And no, it's not a bridge to another fighting style, but there's an upgraded version of it called Dragon Talon, but we'll get there in a moment. Dragon Breath can be bought for 1,500 fragments from an NPC called Sabi, who's located in a bridge at the Kingdom of Rose in the Second Sea, and in the Third Sea you can get it at the Castle on the Sea. Once you purchase it, you'll receive a title Dragonborn. This fighting style is relatively cheap considering what you get. Three moves that have good damage and range, and some of its hitboxes are great. The first move is called Dragon Rush, second Dragon Flames, and third Dragon Explosion. All moves are multiple targets, meaning you can hit multiple enemies at once. This fighting style was added in update 8, and it used to cost a rare artifact, but that was changed to its current price in update 11. Now we're getting more serious. Death Step, a fighting style that's an upgraded version of Dark Step, and more powerful in every aspect. Death Step is a leg-based fighting style, which can be learned from Foyu, the reformed in the second C or third C. Just like Dark Step, when equipped along the aura, aura will be based on the legs instead of arms. Believe it or not, Death Step is a bridge to the even more powerful fighting style
now called God Human. One of the requirements for God Human is to have Dark Step with mastery of 400 or above. Death Step is the second of two fighting styles that have four moves. Rocket Kick, Wind Bullet, Vermilion Drill, and Maximum Overheat. In order to learn Death Step, you need a few requirements. 5,000 Fragments, 2.5 million Belly, Dark Step mastery of 400 or above, and a library key obtained from the Awakened Ice Admiral. Death Step is excellent for PvP and bounty hunting due to its range, damage, fast paced moves, and great combo potential. The only downside would be that it's a bit hard to hit enemies from a large distance, but who cares? Death Step is one of the most used fighting styles in the entire game. But here we have a successor of the fighting style we just went over, Water Kung Fu. And of course this is Sharkman Karate, a fighting style only obtainable in the second C. It's considered to be a great fighting style for combos mainly because its moves are faster, easy to hit, and deal much more damage compared to Water Kung Fu. It's also considered by many as one of the best fighting styles for grinding, mainly because the M1s are very fast and do not cause the player to dash. To obtain this fighting style, you'll first need to get your Water Kung Fu to 400 mastery, defeat the Timekeeper, and get a Water Key, and only then you'll be able to pay Dagrock, the Sharkman at the Forgotten Island in the Second Sea, 2.5 million Belly, and 5,000 Fragments to learn the Sharkman Karate. This style has three moves, the first one being 12 Water Pop, second Pressure Vortex, and third Great Sea Spear. All these moves can damage Sea Beasts and Sharkman Karate is an extremely good choice for booty users because M1 is the fastest among all fighting styles. But if your focus is on PvP, I suggest you get a Superhuman. It's pretty bad at farming, but its PvP potential definitely makes up for it. This fighting style was extremely popular in the past and it can be upgraded to God Human in the third C. In order to obtain it, you'll need to have 300 plus mastery on Dark Step, Electric, Water Kung Fu, and Dragon Breath. Once you've got that, you have to pay 3 million belly to the Martial Arts Master, located in a hidden cave inside the Snow Mountain in the second C. Superhuman has 3 moves, Beast Owl Pounce, Thunderclap, and Conqueror Gun. This fighting style has extremely high combo potential, very good knockback, and damage, which makes it a perfect PvP fighting style that's also great for raids, since you can use the Z move to stun the boss so others can hit it. Literally all its moves can be comboed for excellent damage output, and the Z and C moves are good for running away when you're low on health. Some refer to it as the upgraded version of combat style because its Z and X moves look like a better version of it. Many players have never even heard about the God's Chalice. The God's Chalice is a crucial item that plays an essential role in the endgame. It is the third C counterpart of the Fist of Darkness, and there are a few ways you can lay your hands on this item. The most difficult one is arguably getting it after defeating an elite pirate, where their drop chance is only 2.1%. Dark Coat is a mythical accessory that buffs your energy and health by 600 and makes you deal 15% more fruit damage. To get this rare item, you need to kill the boss Darkbeard, but the chance of it being dropped is only 2%, so you should be ready to spend hours grinding it. If you want to move faster, cool shades are a must have because they increase your speed by 17.5% along with many other boosts. In order to obtain this accessory, you'll need to kill Cyborg, who can be found at the Fountain City in the first C, but good luck getting them because the chance of him dropping cool shades is only 1.5%. Doe is considered to be one of the hardest box fruits to awaken, but it's also really hard to find in stock because its chances of being there are only 1.4% and your chances of getting it from blocks for gacha are also 1.4% while its chances of spawning are 1.34% but I heard a little rumor that if you subscribe this will go up to 1.5% okay maybe not but what do you think about doe fruit since we already have a leopard fruit it would be a good idea to make a giraffe fruit since we're making a safari giraffe fruits transformation would be so cool you'd be super tall and your range would be huge maybe even bigger bigger than Buddha's transformed range. I just don't know how interesting the moves would be, but I'm sure developers would find a way to make them really good. Moving on to the next one, we have a stone fruit. Just look how crazy this transformation looks. This is a fan-made concept and the first move is stone gauntlet, but it's nothing compared to the second move called stone spikes. This move would literally spike up your enemies from the ground and oh, that would have hurt in real life. The next move is called colossal spikes and it's similar to ice's surge move, but the highest mastery stone move looks too good. First a stone ball is thrown at the enemy and then hit with a stone spear before it hits the enemy causing the ball to explode. This move is called stone spear and it's definitely something I'd love to see in blocks fruits. Subscribe if you would too. The second C has some even crazier accessories with the first one being the black spiky coat, an accessory that can be obtained after defeating the Jeremy boss who is located in the kingdom of Rose in the second C. This accessory gives you plus 200 health and energy and 7.5% damage on any attack. The next accessory looks pretty much the same except it's blue. Blue spiky coat is an accessory that can be obtained after defeating the cursed captain boss, who has a 33.3% chance of spawning in the cursed ship in the second sea every 
every in-game night. Even though the only appearance difference between Blue Spiky Coat and Black Spiky Coat is the color, Blue Spiky Coat is actually much better. This accessor gives you plus 500 energy, plus 250 health, and 7.5% more damage on any attack. But that's not all. We've got another Spiky Coat, and this one is red. Red Spiky Coat can be obtained in the same way as Blue Spiky Coat, and the only difference are the switch numbers of energy and health boost. Red Spiky Coat gives you plus 250 energy, plus 500 health, and once again 7.5% more damage on any attack. Now moving on to the Choppa. Choppa is a rare accessory obtained after defeating a Sea Beast. Choppa gives you 3% more fruit damage, 10% higher fruit defense, and 15% faster fruit cooldown. This accessory is great for players that primarily use fruits. Did you know that the Spike Fruit was previously called Spike Spike? Nowadays it's just Spike, and it's been in the game since update 1, and is more commonly referred to as the Walmart Dough, since it has skills similar to an Awakened Dough Fruit. But this fruit was previously hated due to its high chance of getting it from a Blocks Fruits Gacha, while not being very useful. But since then it's improved a lot, getting a large buff in update 17.3. But there's no way you know that back in the day, Control Fruit's V move used to shrink after catching a player, and disappeared after the move. I mean, if you notice this detail, you're truly an OG player. Soul Guitar is currently the only mythical gun in the game. The gun uses energy and before the latest update called Ghost Event, the Soul Guitar was healed from ships. But this no longer happened. Have you ever heard about the glitch that made it possible to kill the beautiful pirate and obtain Rainbow Aura? You had to go to Hydra Island, flash step into a secret room, then use flash step again into beautiful pirate domain. Once you're there, you were able to kill the beautiful pirate. However, this glitch has now been patched, and you will be teleported outside the beautiful pirate domain when attempting to do this glitch if you don't have it unlocked. The next one is an incredible way of leveling up. This makes it possible to level up for your friends without them having to do much. All you need to do is collect as many fragments as possible, a few thousand preferably. Then go buy a raid ship and start a raid against order. This is a great way to carry your friends and level up for them, because five of you can collect fragments, get into a raid, complete it, and get three level ups. How? Well, order grants the player three level ups, except if you're over level 2000. Then you get two level ups, but still, if you're at level 2548 and kill order, you'll become max level. The same thing can be done if you're in the third C, just instead of order. You'll need to defeat Rip Indra, which is slightly more difficult, but still doable. Let me go ask my friends if they'll help me level up. Oh yeah, I forgot. I don't have any friends. There are some pretty cool shades you should get in the first C. If you go to the Fountain Island and defeat a boss named Cyborg, you'll get the rare accessory called Cool Shades, which are just some black glasses. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, these are not just some black glasses. These glasses are a must-have. Why you ask? Well, they give you 100 more energy, 100 more health, 7.5% more damage, and 17.5% faster movement speed. And all you have to do is literally kill one boss, which is super easy. These glasses will make your leveling up process way faster. But if you don't want to do all the grinding for the true triple katana, don't worry, I've got something similar that's completely free. If you go over to the ice castle and head inside of it, there will be a boss known as Awakened Ice Admiral. You'll need to kill him, but be careful since he's level 1400. But once you do it, you'll get a hidden key, which you can use to get a secret chest located under the stairs. That will give you a sword called Rengoku. Even though Blocks Fruits is based on the One Piece anime, for some reason Blocks Fruits developers decided to include a sword from the Demon Slayer anime. Still, Rengoku is a pretty good sword, and for some reason my character is holding it really suspicious. Anyways, you'll pass through the second C super easily with this sword, so I definitely recommend you get it. But here's another important thing many of you may forget to do. I'm talking about Race Awakening. Race Awakening puts you way ahead of others, and gives you tons of benefits that will help you out while grinding. To awaken your race, you'll need to complete specific quests, puzzles, and trials, depending on the race you want to get. Once you awaken your race, it'll enhance their mobility, reduce your cooldown, improve defense, aid in PvP and PvE combat, and much more. But before you head to awaken your race, make sure to fulfill all the requirements needed. You need to be in the third C, any race V3 if you're upgrading to V4, defeat Rip Indra at least once, have a mirror fractal, have found the blue gear on Mirage Island, and even more. But yeah, even though it might be exhausting to awaken your race, it's undoubtedly worth it. I honestly don't know how someone found this out. Did you know that you can set your spawn point from outside of the mansion, literally through the wall? Like, how do you spot that? I honestly don't know. But this might save you 0.001 seconds of your life someday. Now that's hidden. The Blocks Fruits map is full of some random blocks sticking out from various places. The most famous one is that huge block sticking out in front of the haunted castle. No one knows how and why it's there. Devs had probably just forgotten to remove it, but I don't mind it honestly. There's also another block longer than it's supposed to be in the port town, which is just super funny. You probably didn't know that some of the gravestones in the graveyard make fun of special people 
people's deaths. One of the gravestones appeared to be Fontaine's gravestone, and it implies how he once, when he was alive, said, can I have a gravestone? Something's telling me he was working on the game with the rest of the developers, and jokingly said this. And now here it is. Luckily, he was just joking with his friends, and he's still alive, I guess? I wish I had friends to joke around with. Anyways, Fontaine was laying in his gravestone alone until update 13, when another gravestone finally got text. This was E's gravestone, and it said, if I get to BV, I will stop. And underneath that, there are three letters. TBA, which stands for to be announced. No one really knows what the purpose of his message was, but those three letters tell us that there's more things coming up, even though this was several updates ago, and we still don't know its meaning. The third and last gravestone was on behalf of Wenlock, and it says dead for disrespecting his masters. I guess he threw a few disrespectful jokes, but his friends still put on headphones in his graveyard so he could get a better experience while watching my videos. Throughout Blocks Fruit's history, the game was constantly getting new hidden hints, and only the players with the sharpest pair of eyes were able to spot them. Here are some of them. The first hint is located in the cafe, and it says it exists. Even if some of you have already seen it, I bet you don't know what it means. But don't worry, I'll tell you. It means that the white aura does in fact exist, or does it mean the one piece is real? The second hint can be found in the awakening room, and it says life form, which hints that you need all the races to get white aura. And there's also another hint in the basement of the lab, and this one says undead, which hints us about zombies. And guess where the zombies are? At the graveyard, of course. And where can you get white aura? Also at the graveyard. Meaning that all of the hints since day one were implying that white aura will eventually exist. It's crazy how developers had this all planned out from the beginning. Did you know about this? Comment down below. And once you unlock every purchasable aura color, you'll receive one of the coolest titles so far, Hakaishin, which in Japanese means God of Destruction. I doubt many players have this one because it is just too hard to obtain. In order to obtain the next title, you'll need to visit Spooky Graveyard. The title is Slayer of God, and in order to get it, you'll need Dark Blade, then the Angel, Rabbit, Shark, and Human Races at their V3 stage or above. And on top of all of that, two Fists of Darkness. You'll need one for starting a Darkbeard raid, and one to open the door at the graveyard. But keep in mind that you cannot have two fists in your inventory at once, meaning you need to get a friend to get one fist, and you to get another. I automatically know I'm never getting this one, since I don't have any friends. But it's not like I have a dark blade. The next one is definitely far more simple. The title is Lonely Reaper, and in order to obtain it, you need to collect 1,000 ectoplasm. It'll definitely take you some time to collect those and get the title, but hey, at least you can do it without owning a dark blade. This might be the craziest title I've ever heard. It's called Pirate King, and if you want to get it, you'll need to be the owner of a crew that has been on the top 10 of the leaderboard. It's got the nice yellow color, and it's pretty obvious why not many people have it. Electric is nothing compared to its successor, Electric Claw. This fighting style is mainly used for PvP due to its speed, easy to hit, powerful, and stunning skills. There's a few steps you need to complete in order to obtain this fighting style. First, you need 400 mastery on the Electric fighting style. Then, find the previous hero NPC, who's located close to the Longma boss at the Floating Turtle in the Third Sea. There you will start his quest and find a way to get to the mansion in under 30 seconds. Just set your spawn point at mansion and reset your character once you start the quest. But don't tell anyone I told you this. After completing the quest, return back to the previous hero and pay him 3 million belly and 5,000 fragments to obtain the Electric Claw. Electric Rampage, Lightning Thrust, and Thunderclap and Flash are Electric Claw's three very quick moves and all of them damage CBs. Aside from that, Electric Claw is a very good fighting style for booty users because if the player uses an auto clicker, they can click extremely fast and the moves are pretty good as well. Do you know Yuzoth? If not, go meet him because you'll need him in order to learn Dragon Talon. Both Dragon Breath and Dragon Talon have dragon-like moves, which means that the Dragon Breath is Dragon Talon's predecessor. In order to obtain this fighting style, you'll need to complete three steps. First, you need to obtain a fire essence from a random surprise, which can be bought from the Death King NPC at the Haunted Castle 10 times every two hours for 50 bones. Once you've got that, you need to go to the Yuzoth, who's located at the big gear to the right of the pole on the Haunted Castle, and give him the essence. Yuzoth will accept your fire essence at any time. And once you complete that, you just completed the first part of obtaining it, meaning now you have access to purchase Dragon Talon fighting style. Now you need to have at least 400 mastery on Dragon Breath, 3 million belly, and 5,000 fragments in order to purchase the Dragon Talon. Dragon Talon has three moves, Talon Lighter, Ember Annihilation, and Infernal Vortex. Moves have big hitboxes and are area of effect, high damage, and most of them work with Awakened Buddha. They're also super easy to aim, well except for Z moves. This fighting style was added in update 16, and since then it's been one of the hardest fighting styles to obtain. Do you have it? I bet you've all been waiting for God Human, and here it is. God Human is known 
known as the successor and enhanced version of the superhuman fighting style. Godhuman's exceptional speed, stunning maneuvers, and powerful knockback abilities make it a perfect PvP fighting style, especially when combined with PvP oriented fruits, such as ice or dough, as it can serve as an amazing stun while using moves. This fighting style is obtainable by learning it from an ancient monk, who can be found inside a tree located behind the musketeer pirates in the floating turtle. But before you head over there, make sure you meet all the requirements to purchase it. First of all, and well obviously, you need to be in the third seat. Then you need 400 or more mastery on superhuman, death step, electric claw, shark man karate, and dragon talent. That's a lot, and I mean like a lot. It'll take you quite some time to meet these requirements, and there's still more. Once you've got that, you'll need 5 million belly, 5,000 fragments, 10 dragon scales, 20 fish tails, 10 mystic droplets, and 20 magma ores. There's no way you're getting all of these without using an auto clicker. The moves of god human are soaring beast, heaven and earth, and six realm gun. They're known for an amazing combo potential and high damage. In total, god human will cost you 25.4 million belly and 31,500 fragments. Do you still think it's worth it? And last but not least, we've got sanguine art fighting style, a darkness and vampiric based fighting style. It's a great fighting style for grinding and raids due to the long range moves. Most melee enemies won't even be able to hit you. The sanguine art can be learned from Shafi, who can be found in a base linked by a tunnel near the island boys, located in the Tiki outpost. But before you're able to purchase it, you'll need to obtain a leviathan heart first and give it to Shafi. Then you need to get 20 demonic wisps, 20 vampire fangs, and 2 dark fragments. Only then will you be able to pay 5 million belly and 5,000 fragments to learn the sanguine art. The moves of this fighting style are Bloodbane Drain, Scarlet Tear, and Devourer of Worlds. Whoa, that one sounds so cool. All of these moves can hurt sea beasts, and all of them can break instinct. On top of that, they have a good combo potential. But the interesting thing about sanguine art is that this is the first fighting style to have a life-stealing move. Some moves have a short range compared to other fighting styles, but you definitely won't be thinking about that while having this fighting style equipped. In total, there are 39 swords and blocks fruits, and in order to obtain them, all you'd have to do is grind for months, if not years. There are several ways to obtain swords in the game, but only 1.31% of players have obtained all swords. What sword do you use? Did you know that the bounty cap in blocks fruits is 30 million? To this day, only 1.23% of players have succeeded to get the max bounty. So let's make a bounty leaderboard down in the comments. Did you know that your chances of meeting a hacker in blocks fruits are 1.15%? That doesn't really seem high, but it's also not low either. Maybe blocks fruits needs to get a better anti-cheat system. Dragon fruit is an incredible PvP fruit due to its powerful AoE and instinct break moves, but its chances of being in stock are only 1%, whilst its chances of spawning on the ground are only 0.7%. The next fruit we're craving for is gold fruit, and someone made a showcase for it. So let's take a look at that move set. The first move on the list is golden spear, and it's similar to stone spikes. The second move is air punch, which lifts your enemy into the sky and stabs it on both sides with golden spikes coming out of the ground. Huh, who thought of that? Even though it looks cool, I doubt it would be that useful of a move. The next move is the golden axe, and it's basically the same thing as stone's colossal spikes, but with an axe. Honestly, the gold fruit is looking kinda boring. Comment down below what you think. The next fruit is definitely one of the most wanted fruits that still hasn't been added to blocks fruit. This is Dark X Quake Awakening, and let's take a look at this concept. These moves look way too good already, and the first one is called Ultimate Aura, which looks super sick. It's one of the best moves I've ever seen in blocks fruits. The second move is Gurra Gatling. What a name. Looks like this move would do quite a lot of damage. And then we have Dark Aura, Mysterious Aura, and the movement. These all look so sick, but I doubt they would look this good in the game. I mean, combining two fruits that are one of the most powerful fruits in the game is absolutely crazy, and we definitely want it. It's getting pretty cold outside. We've got a snow fruit, and it looks like this one only has three moves. The first one is called Purified Snow, and it shoots out multiple snowballs, I think? Then we have Blades of Snow, which looks really mean. Last one is Endless Blizzard, which is an area of effect move that slows down all players in a blizzard, and the damage it does is double what the previous one does. I think this would suit the game perfectly, especially if it was in the top five least expensive fruits. Here's a fruit many players have been expecting to get throughout the years. This fruit is wood fruit, and I imagine it to be something like a trap fruit. It deals bad damage, but it's used to trap your enemies with roots. But to make it a bit more interesting, you wouldn't be able to trap anyone holding a sword, because, well, swords cut through wood pretty easily. On top of that, this fruit would also be weak to players using flame, magma, and anything else hot. Wood is definitely a fruit we've all wanted for years. The next accessory we have is legendary, and it's a zebra cat. This accessory is guaranteed to be dropped after defeating Order, who can be spawned by starting an Order raid in the hidden laboratory on the hot side of the hot and cold island in the second sea. Zebra Cap grants you plus 
10% sword damage, 15% faster cooldown, plus 500 energy, and plus 100 health. Considering this accessory is guaranteed, I suggest you get it as soon as you can. Swan is definitely one of the most mentioned names in Blocks Fruits. And the next accessory is Swan Glasses, which there's a chance you can get after defeating Dawn Swan. Swan Glasses are considered OP, and they're legendary for a reason. They give you 25% faster movement speed, 8% higher damage on everything and anything, 8% faster skills cooldown, plus 8% defense, plus 250 energy, and plus 250 health. This is one of my favorite accessories in the whole game, even though they're really difficult to obtain. Is Ghoul Mask the scariest looking accessory in the game? I don't know, but I know it makes you go fast. Like, really, really fast. Ghoul Mask can be bought from El Pero, who is located in the cursed ship for 50 ectoplasm. This accessory gives you 10% life leech, 2.5% against NPCs, plus 35% speed, and lastly, plus 500 energy. You'll start zooming through the seas once you get the Ghoul Mask. Next up, we have one of the most loved accessories in all of Blocks Fruits. I'm talking about Dark Coat, which is a legendary accessory that gives you plus 600 health and energy, and increases your fruit damage by 15%. The Dark Coat can be obtained after defeating the Dark Beard Raid Boss, who spawns after a Fist of Darkness is placed on the altar at the Dark Arena. Comment down below if you've got this accessory. A giant diamond player was one of the most exploited glitches back in the day. This glitch enabled you to become a big diamond man for as long as you were in the server or until you died. You needed to eat Buddha fruit, transform, and then eat diamond fruit and activate the Encrust ability. This glitch was automatically patched when an update 17.3, devs made it impossible to eat another fruit if you were in the transform. Why did they do this? It was so cool. Did you know that paw fruit doesn't exist anymore? Well, sort of. In update 20, paw fruit was renamed to pain fruit due to copyright reasons. But the moveset remained the same, with the only difference being the word paw switched out for pain. But I think pain fruit sounds way cooler, because paw fruit sounds so friendly and not intimidating at all. You're an OG if you ever had a soul fruit in your inventory, because it got removed in the update 17.3.5. The soul fruit was a natural fruit that used to cost 3.4 million belly. It was one of the 13 fruits that glowed in its physical form, and the highest move required 350 mastery, and the reason it got removed was once again copyright. Nowadays it's slightly reworked, and called spirit fruit. Which one do you like more? I can bet my friend's life you've never heard about the Norp NPC, only because I don't have any friends. But that's not important now. Norp was an NPC that could be found in the cafe, or the mansion in the third C. In exchange for 3,000 fragments, he would change your race randomly. You could get four races from him. Human, Angel, Shark, or Rabbit. Unfortunately, you can no longer find Norp, but you can find Tor, who is Norp's long lost brother, I guess, because they do very similar things. Jaw Shield is probably one of the best accessories you can get for leveling up. It's a rare accessory that can be obtained after completing five quests from the player hunter NPC, and then talking to an NPC called Takomura, who's located at the castle on the sea, and this accessory gives you some crazy good perks. These include plus 500 energy, 250 health, plus 12.5% melee damage, plus 10% on defense from melee attacks, and to top it all off, plus 50% movement speed. This accessory is a must-have, and even though these sound like tiny numbers, you won't believe how important they are and how big of a difference they make. This is what separates you from being a high level and a tremendously high level. You probably didn't know that one of the best accessories to use in the first sea is Black Cave. To get this accessory, Accessory, go to Marine Fortress, climb on top of the right tower, like the rightest tower, and then go down. Down there you will find a parlous NPC, and do you know what you can get from him? Yep, you guessed it, a black cape. Black cape costs 50,000 belly, and it's one of the rare accessories that has no requirements. You just need 50,000 to buy it, and that's it. Black cape bumps up both your health and energy by 100, and gives 5% more damage on any attack. And let me know down below, was this something you got in the first C? But here's another accessory that's OP for leveling up. It's called pilot helmet, and it's not that hard to get. This accessory buffs your movement speed by a whopping 130%, speeds up your health regeneration by 10%, and bumps up your health and energy by 250. Honestly, this is one of my favorite accessories in the entire game, and to get it, you just need to defeat stone bosses in the port town. Then you have a 5% chance of getting it every time you kill a boss, and if you don't get it the first time, just server hop until you do. Some of you may have already talked to this NPC called King Redhead, but I'm pretty sure none of you know what he's actually talking about. King Redhead is one of the most mysterious and developed NPCs in the whole entire game. He's located in the second C, and if you're in the third C and go back to the second C to talk to him, he'll say, hi, this is a mental image of myself. I'm currently sealed in the third C. And if you go back to the third C and look behind the sea castle, you'll see some sort of a stone tablet where King Redhead's body parts are sealed in. Here's a backstory if you don't know how that happened. Him and Rip 
Ninja actually got in a fight, and Rip Ninja absolutely destroyed him. But that wasn't enough, so he decided to cut him up and cement his body into one huge gravestone. No one knew Rip Ninja was that crazy, huh? But if that wasn't hidden enough, this one is even crazier, being rated one of the best hiding spots in the game. This spot will make sure no one can ever find you, not even the admins. To hide here, you'll need to go to the ice castle, stand close to this wall, adjust your angle, and flash step your way inside of it. Not only is it the best hiding spot, but it's also huge. So you can, I don't know, train, test your moves, do some push-ups, anything. You can even bring your friends here and hang out with them all day long. And that's exactly what I was planning to do. Oh yeah, I just remembered I don't have any. Now we have a bit sweeter sounding of a title, Loco Verde. If you collect 1,000 candies during the event, you'll be rewarded with this perfect shade of green title. I just love green. Here's another title only third C players can get, but it's still a gray one. Raid Boss is a title you get once you get a fruit from a pirate raid event. This event happens every 1 hour and 15 minutes, but keep in mind that chances of getting a fruit from this event are extremely low. In order to get the next one, you need to defeat an elite pirate, level 1750 NPCs. There are 3 elite pirates in the game, DeAndre, Diablo, and Urban. DeAndre uses Awakened Magma, Diablo uses Awakened Dark, and Urban uses Awakened Rumble. Sometimes these guys can be extremely tough, but it all depends on you. Now I'm asking you, is this really worth getting the gray title? I mean, you must do it, however. But is gray enough? Despite being wanted and difficult to obtain titles, it's time to take a break from those gray titles. And now we'll spice things up a bit with a red title called Demon Mode. In order to get this title, you need to obtain a legendary sword Yama, and I think this one's totally worth it. The process is similar for getting this next title, but the previous title is still slightly better. This one is Celestial Swordsman. It's yellow, and once you get it, you unlock Tushita. I'll just say that you need to be at least level 2000 in order to obtain this sword, and obviously this title. This next title sounds pretty cool, but it'll only take you 30 seconds to get it. Well, not really, but you need to unlock Electric Claw, which means you must get to the mansion from the Floating Turtle in under 30 seconds. You can simply set mansion as your spawn point, use home button, and voila. Then once you pay 3 million belly, Electric Claw will be unlocked, and you'll get the title, Raitan. And if you think that's difficult, watch this. In order to obtain this next title, which is blue colored and called Shadow Sovereign, you'll need to defeat Rip Indra in his true form. Rip Indra uses Dark Blade V2 as his primary weapon, that is until his health gets low. Then he gets all of his HP back and let's say awakens to his true form. In his true form, Rip Indra uses Dark Blade V3, Black Bomb, and Black Pillar. Comment down below if you have this one, and props to you if you actually do. The God's Chalice is a crucial item that plays an essential role in the endgame, and upon obtaining it, you get the title The Chosen One. But there's a catch. There's a few different ways you can obtain this item, but for getting this particular title, you must get the God's Chalice from the chest. A chest which is at least 4 hours old gets a chalice, so you'll need to camp by the chest for 4 hours and make sure no one gets it. When I launched Box Roots for the first time, I met an admin right away. I didn't have a clue how lucky I was though, because the chances of meeting an admin are only 0.98%. The Kitsune Fruit is a mythical beast type Blox Fruit that costs 8 million belly when in stock. This Blox Fruit is the second newest and most expensive fruit, and it has an incredibly high demand due to its grinding and PvP potential. You can obtain this fruit from Kitsune Shrine, but with a chance of only 0.5%. Matter of fact, you have higher chances of getting it from Kitsune Shrine than finding it in stock, because in stock it has only a 0.25 chance to appear. I won't even talk about finding it on the ground, because there's no way you'll ever find it when its chance of spawning is 0.1%. Also, if you hope to get it from Blox Fruit Gacha, forget about it because there's a 0.05 chance you'll get Kitsune Fruit from him. Leopard is arguably one of the most difficult fruits to obtain in the entire game. It's the second most expensive fruit, and you have a 0.4% chance to find it in stock, and 0.25% chance to find it on the ground. Getting it from Blox Fruit Gacha is even more rare, because there's only a 0.1% chance you'll get it from him. Subscribe if you love Leopard. Blox Fruits is filled with some really amazing accessories, that makes playing the game way better, as well as some really bad accessories no one ever uses. However, obtaining all accessories is a big flex, but you've only got a 0.08% chance of doing that. Alright, this one might be the coolest fan-made fruit in this video so far. It's called Gas Fruit, it has 4 moves, and I just love it. The first move is called Gas Lining, and it's an area of effect move that shoots out some sort of gas shurikens. The second move is called Gas Laughing, and this move shoots out 3 gas balls which then merge into one huge ball. Now here we have arguably the coolest move ever. It's called Gas Cover, and it spawns a gas cloud around you, and 
when this move is activated, you can fly. This is the perfect transportation move that on top of that deals damage. Last but not least is the most powerful gas fruit move called the Exclusion Zone. And that name already tells us it's something crazy. This move spawns a huge gas cloud around you, damaging every enemy in its range. I'm just wondering how much energy these moves consume, or should I say how much gas they consume. When the weather gets warmer, snow becomes water. So here we have a water fruit. Since we already have ice fruit, and we'll maybe get a snow fruit, we must also get the water fruit. This fruit only has three moves, the first one being water drops, which launches huge water drops onto your enemy. These are not drops, these are literally pools of water. The next move is called spinning wave, and it looks absolutely sick. I really want to know how much damage this one deals, but the last water fruit move is called water vortex. I think this is some kind of a barrier fruit, because it looks like it spawns a water vortex around you, and protects you from the enemies by dealing damage to them. Comment down below what do you think about this one? Did you know that the pilot helmet is the fastest accessory in the game? This accessory increases your movement speed by a whopping 130%. That's literally more than double. And on top of that, it also gives you 10% faster health regeneration and plus 250 health and energy. This accessory can be dropped from stone, which is located in Port Town, the first island in the third sea. It's pretty easy to get and it's good for grinding because you can do a dash trick with this accessory. But next among the best accessories in the third sea is Jaw Shield. Jaw Shield gives you 12.5% more damage on melee attacks, 10% defense against melee attacks, 50% faster movement speed, and 500 energy and 250 health. The Jaw Shield can be obtained by completing 5 quests from the player hunter, and then interacting with the Takomura NPC, who is located on the top of the stairs to the left upon entering the castle on the sea. Captain Elephant also wears this accessory, but he doesn't have the buffs and doesn't drop it, so I guess he's just protecting his jaw. If you're using a Cyborg Race, you'll love the next one because it's good for pairing with Cyborg Race because of V2 energy regeneration generation passive. This accessory is Holy Crown, and it can be obtained after defeating the Soul Reaper raid boss. Holy Crown gives you 5% more damage on any attack, 5% more defense against any attack, 5% faster energy regeneration, and 500 energy and 500 health. Although the drop chance is 100%, it's pretty difficult to obtain, but if you ask me, it's definitely worth it. The next accessory is basically an alternative version of Pale Scarf, and it's called Kitsune Mask. This accessory can be obtained by submitting 15 or more Azure Embers at the Kitsune Shrine during the Blue Moon event, which is on Kitsune Island. Kitsune Mask gives you 10% higher fruit damage, plus 2 instinct dodges, 15% increased passive regeneration on fruit meters, 50% more enhanced vision in Dark Seas, and plus 750 health. It's definitely the most useful accessory for exploring Dark Seas. Have you ever been on the North Pole Island? If not, that's probably because you missed it during the Christmas event. It was pretty easy to find even though it was supposed to be a special island. It was located right next to the Frozen Village, so all you need to do is simply go to the Frozen Village, look to the right of it, and there you would find the North Pole Island. When it comes to the second sea, it's near the cursed ship. I wonder if this island will actually come back at some point. The North Pole Island that used to exist was filled with interesting stuff. One of those being presents, an item that was earned by destroying a big present that spawns on the North Pole at the center. You didn't have to break the big present in order to get the gift, as it used to open on its own after a few seconds, and release a bunch of small gifts depending on how many players were surrounding it. Each player would only be able to get one gift each hour, and opening a gift would give one player a random blocks fruit, but also a small chance of granting a mythical accessory called the Holiday Cloak. The present event used to start every hour at the North Pole, but as the island was removed, the present was too. I really hope this comes back one day. Valentine's Day isn't too far away, and hopefully we'll get the chance to buy the Cupid's Coat once again. The Cupid's Coat was a legendary accessory you were able to obtain by purchasing it from the Valentine's event shop for 750 hearts. This coat used to give you quite a few buffs, 12.5% more damage on fruits and sword attacks, 8% defense against any attack, and 400 energy and 600 health. Since the Valentine event ended long ago, you're not able to purchase it anymore, and it's considered removed. I've never seen someone wearing it either. Did you know about this? Let me know down below. You probably know all about the ghost fruit, but I bet you don't know about its father called Revive Fruit. Revive Fruit was an uncommon natural fruit that cost 550,000 belly. This fruit was able to revive the player by using C move after being killed, and it was the only fruit with this ability. Still, it was very unused due to the fact that it had only two attack moves, and both of them were only useful on rare occasions. In the update 20.1, this fruit was reworked as a ghost fruit, and I must say it doesn't remind me of revive fruit at all. So was this really removed? Let me know what you think. Have you ever heard about the NPC that got removed three times already? The magic elf is a limited time NPC who sells several boosts and items in exchange for candy. It was added in update 13 before being removed in update 14, and then re-added in the first part of update 17, and 
once again removed in the second part of update 17. Last time it was re-added was in update 18, and then it got removed on March 1st of 2023. I think that's the last time we had an opportunity to see Magic Elf, because something tells me he's not coming back. The Citizen's Quest is required to be completed in order to access Instinct V2, but no one is talking about the title you get once you complete this quest, probably because it's grey, but it makes you the main character. Literally, the title says main character. This one would be way cooler if it had a title no other title has. Secret aura colors are only obtainable via quest. There's two of them, but today we'll be talking about Rainbow Savior, which can only be obtained through the quest. Just like all the other aura colors, this color is purely cosmetic, and it will not boost your defense nor your attack. It also can't be bought with Robux, so it means it'll take you some hassle to get it. And at this point, I'm asking myself, is the hassle really worth the gray final hero title? I don't know. You tell me. Even though bones are an uncommon material, if you collect 2,000 of them, you'll get one amazing title, Death King. And this time, we don't have a gray title, but a blue one. Now that's what I'm talking about. Finally, we've got to the last gray title on the list. And all you need to do to get this Shinigami title is defeat Soul Reaper once. Well, it's not that easy, since Soul Reaper is a level 2,100 raid boss who uses the Hallow Scythe and deals 2,000 to 3,000 damage per hit. Not all players get to buy perm fruits because we get Robux only for birthdays. Players who have bought perm fruit usually buy one or two. But did you know that only 0.07% of Blocks Fruits players have bought all the permanent fruits? Those players must be millionaires in real life. My Game 43 is the developer, owner, and admin of Blocks Fruits, as well as a few other similar games. But what's shocking are the chances of you actually meeting him. You've only got a 0.003% chance of meeting My Game 43. Don't even try to tell me you met him. We all know you're lying. Meeting Rip Indra is an even bigger flex than meeting My Game 43, because you've got a 0.0025% chance of meeting Rip Indra, Blocks Fruits' main developer. I know I will never meet him, but thank you Rip Indra for making such a great game. What's crazier than a Dark Blade? Triple Dark Blade, obviously. The Triple Dark Blade is a mythical and semi obtainable sword. It's called semi obtainable because it isn't obtainable by normal players, as it is an admin slash staff exclusive item that can only be given out by developers of the game. These developers will most likely not be going around and handing out Triple Dark Blades, so because of that, the chances of getting one are 0.001%. Like, you've literally got twice as big of a chance to meet Rip Indra than to get a Triple Dark Blade. Next up on the list, we've got a flower fruit, which at first sounds funny, but believe me, it's pretty interesting. This fruit would look like a cherry blossom flower, and it would have five moves. The first one is called Succulent Full Shun, and it would make your hands three times larger. Your arms would literally bloom, and then it would shove forward with an open palm, aiming at your curse's location, dealing 3,200 damage to your enemy. The next move is called Floral Confine, and it would flood the area around you with cherry blossom flowers, which would then converge into hands and latch on to nearby enemies, stunning them and dealing 2,340 damage. The third move is called Orchid Opulence, which is basically the concept of the first move, but a few shoves at once. This move would deal 3,650 damage, but that's nothing compared to the next move, which would make your hands sprout, spawn a cherry blossom tree, and then drop petals that deal small amounts of damage on the ground. And on top of that, automatically cast Crush every 4 seconds on anyone who enters under the leaves. This crazy move would deal over 5,000 damage. The last move is an area of effect move that gives you cherry blossom wings, and plunges you downward in a low jump kick pose, dealing the area of effect damage wherever you land. This is definitely one of the most planned out fruit concepts so far. Subscribe if you'd love to get this in Blocks Fruit. Moving on to the next fruit called Hollow. Hollow Fruit has four moves, and the first one has a really creepy name. It's called Breath of Demon's Blood, and it's an area of effect move that launches your enemy into the sky. The second move is called the Scream of Death. Gosh, what's up with these names? This move not only looks good, but it sounds good too. Or should I say scary? Anyone affected with this move gets automatically blinded, which is a great feature for PvPs. I thought these names were really creepy, but the next move is called Explosion of Blood Demon. This move looks really good. It drops blood from the sky that accumulates and then explodes, sending your enemies back into the first sea. The last move is called Devil's Blood Transfusion, and for a change, this name is hilarious. This move is also an area of effect move, Explosion to be more precise, but a slightly smaller one. Yeah, I'm done with these names, they're super weird. The next fruit is called Acceleration, and I 
hope this one has something to do with speed, because I'd love to be faster than leopard users. The first move is called photosynthesis, and I think that's more of a flower fruit thing, but alright. This move spawns tree sprouts in front of you, with flowers dealing knockback damage. Honestly, this one would suit the flower fruit way better. The next one is called erosion, and it makes the ground around you literally explode, leaving a small crater. I like that one, but what does it have to do with acceleration? The third move is called hypothermia, which almost sounds like hypothermia, which is when you get way too cold. You already know what I'm about to say. This move would suit the fruit like snow or ice way better. Oh, what? This move lights you on fire, and then launches a huge fire spear. This doesn't make any sense. First because it's called hyperthermia, which pretty much makes it sound cold, and then because wouldn't lighting yourself on fire hurt? I'm so confused. Here we have another kitsune accessory, and this time it's kitsune ribbon. It's a cute looking accessory that can be obtained the same way as kitsune mask. This accessory gives you 10% more defense on fruits damage, 15% faster health regen, 30% faster movement speed, plus 7 dash distance, 25% faster flash step cooldown, and a whopping 2500 energy. Now that's what I call an energy boost. What's better than a pale scarf? Many accessories if you ask me, but the community tends to love the pale scarf anyway. This accessory gives you 15% more damage on fruits and swords, 2 extra instinct dodges, and 10 times larger instinct vision range. The pale scarf can be obtained after defeating the cake prince boss, or the doe king boss, and dealing 10% or more damage to them. Now here we have something even more interesting, terror jaw. This accessory gives you 10% more damage on sword attacks, 10% cooldown reduction on any attack, 20% defense against sea events, and plus 200 energy and health. Terror jaw can be obtained from the shark hunter in the tiki outpost, but you can also craft it yourself if you have one terror eye, two mutant teeth, 10 fools gold, and 5 shark teeth. The defense against sea events this accessory gives you is really worth your time. This next accessory is obtained by killing the blocks for its owner. I'm talking about Valkyrie Helm, which you can obtain after defeating Ripinge or Raid Boss. I think it's pretty easy to obtain since at this point you spent quite some time in the third C, and the buffs this accessory grants the player are 15% more damage on sword attacks and plus 600 energy and health. If you've ever tried to prey in blocks fruits, hoping you'll get something, you know how often it can just be a waste of time. But if you somehow manage to get Hollow Essence and God's Chalice by praying, you'll be rewarded with the dark red title. That says the devil's luck. Imagine having a pink Doe Commander title. That would be so cool. And best of all, it's actually obtainable. Just get to the Cake Prince and kill him. Well, that's not just considering he's got over 700,000 HP, but it's doable. Trust me. What title do you get once you kill the Doe King? Well, the Doe King title, obviously. You gotta be quick though, because this guy has 1,111,500 HP, and you need to kill him in less than 7 minutes and 30 seconds, or he'll despawn, and you won't get the title. You know what would be a real flex? Owning a title that comes from the level 6 C danger. In order to get this blue serpent slayer title, you'll need to defeat Leviathan. Leviathan doesn't take damage from M1 attacks, except for Kitsune, Leopard, and Mammoth Transformation M1, or single target attacks. And you can say he's similar to a sea beast. There's simply no way you're killing him alone. So gather some friends and do it together. At least one of us will have this title, and that's never me. But this is one of the rarest things that ever happened to a player while opening a fruit dealer's stock in order to get a fruit. When this guy opened the stock and saw that both Gravity and Venom were in the stock, he was shocked. When combining the chances of getting these fruits, we come to the chance of this happening being only 0.02%. The chances of Leopard spawning in one server are already low enough. But what if I told you that the chances of Leopard spawning in every Blocks fruit server at the same hour is literally impossible. And when I say impossible, I mean 1 in 400 to the 29,000th power. This can't even be written out in a percentage. It would have like a million zeros. But I told my friends I once spotted the le- Oh yeah, I don't have any friends. The Azure Ember is a legendary material used for trading with Kitsune Shrine. You can get various items from him in exchange for Azure Embers, money, frags, accessories, and even titles. The max Azure Embers you can carry is 25, and it's really tricky to obtain these. First, you'll need to find a server with a full moon, then go to danger level 6 during the full moon, and wait for a text saying a mysterious shrine has appeared in the sea. Once you see that, you should also be able to see Kitsune Island right in front of you. Get onto the island and interact with Kitsune Shrine. Once you interact, you should see a text saying the full moon shifts into a deep shade of blue. Now the moon is in the state of a blue moon, and you have 5 minutes to get Azure Embers. The Azure Embers should spawn near you, approximately 2-5 to five Embers every 30 seconds. In order to get them, you need to chase them and touch them. And like I said, the max cap for Azure Embers in your inventory is only 25, but you can collect more than that. They just won't show in your inventory, obviously. The chances of obtaining 50 Azure Embers in one go is only 
1%. And to this day, I've never met someone who did this. What's your high score? Leviathan Shield is the accessory that makes it impossible to die in water because it reduces sea damage by 90%. Besides that, this accessory also gives you 15% more defense against melee, sword, and gun attacks, 30% more defense against sea events, and a staggering plus 1000 health. This accessory can be crafted through the Beast Hunter NPC at the cost of 1 Mirror Fractal, 30 Leviathan Scale, 10 Electric Wings, and 20 Fool's Gold. It's very hard to obtain, considering you'll need 30 Leviathan Scales, which can only be dropped while defeating the Leviathan Raid Boss. The next up is Santa Hat, and this accessory is also bought from Santa Claus at the price of 500 candies. Santa Hat gives you 12.5% more damage on fruit and sword attacks, 30% faster running speed, and plus 400 health and energy. But wait, that's not it. There's one more accessory that's unobtainable. It's called DS Co. DS stands for Diamond Syndicate, a crew that originally won the July 2019 tournament. The members of the crew obtained this coat, and the owner of the crew also received access to the Slash Disguise command in game. The coat had the crew's logo in the middle, and was completely custom made. However, this cape was removed from the game, because one of the group admins made this accessory available to buy using Robux. Since then, the only players you can see wearing this accessory are admins. The buffs this accessory granted the player are pretty weak. 5% more damage on all attacks, plus 200 energy and health, and a custom ability that's broken. However, having the proof that you once owned this is the biggest flex you can have in all of Bloxfruit. Bloxfruit's map is 97% sea, and some people take that for granted. I mean, they spend most of the time on the sea, often hunting sea bees. But did you know that after you kill 200 sea bees, you get this cool nautical bane title that has an amazing shade of blue. This one might be my favorite. Kitsune is one of the most recent fruits added to the game, and along with the fruit and NPCs, there are a few more new things such as this new blue tail beast title. You can get it from the new NPC called Kitsune Shrine. If you offer him 15 to 25 Azure Embers, go out there and test your luck, because besides this item, there are 8 more things you could potentially get. And last but not least, we've got a bonus title, which is arguably one of the craziest in the whole video. The title is yellow, and it says equal to the heaven. The only way you can obtain this title is if you kill a staff member, an admin, moderator, dev, anyone. But just imagine how hard it is to do so. I don't think I'll ever have this unless one of the Bloxfruits admins lets me do it.